friends and welcome back to my homestead. Today is April 21st and it's time for me to pick and transplant my little pepper plants. Remember when I started them a month ago, a little bit over a month ago, and I started them from seed in this little rotisserie chicken um, container. And now they're perfect to be picked and transplanted into a larger pots. So let me move my camera a little bit so you guys can see it. Do you see how it has several independent leaves? So now it's time for them, aren't they beautiful? Now it's time for me to transplant them into a larger pot where they will have more place to develop healthy roots and that's where they're gonna stay until they are ready to be transplanted into the ground. Now for my growing six, uh, 6A growing zone in New England, I know that it's safe for them to go into the soil outdoors uh, probably like last week of May. At least that's what I do. I know many gardeners are so eager to start their garden so soon, but unfortunately, peppers and eggplants are very finicky and they don't like cold and that may suppress or completely stop them from producing um, vegetables so let's avoid that so i'm going to be transplanting them into this clear pots that i have these are the regular you know um for punch whatever pots or i have or i have these guys or i have these guys so also a good size but they're a little shorter um, but anyway, they're going to be perfect for planting our, what size is this? Does it say that it says one pint? So this is one pint little pots. Uh, so these are going to be perfect. So let me show you how I do it. All right. So I need to prepare my soil and I need to prepare the pots. So in order for these cups to be utilized, I need to make drainage holes on the bottom. And all I'm doing is I took my clippers and I'm just clipping the sides of them four or five it doesn't matter but enough for them to have some sort of drainage on the bottom it's important these pots do not require because they already have drainage on the bottom and then i need to prepare my soil and um i am using what using what am i using organic potting soil it is from i throw away the cover it's called coast of maine from coast of maine uh it's my uh, potting soil that I use and I don't disinfect it with anything. I know some people do. I really don't do any of that um, So just to keep my hands clean, I'm gonna put some gloves on I like to pour this in some sort of a large container because it's easier to mix it Okay, easier to mix it and I always pre moisten the soil so I just poured some water in here and how, how do I know it's enough because I can squeeze with my hands and the water is not dripping but yet I can make a nice clump. Okay, so that's, that's good. So I'm going to be transplanting them. So here's my cup. I'm going to fill up probably about a half, maybe a little bit more, half. And I just tap it down just lightly because I'm trying to get rid of air pockets that could be on the bottom, right? Let me put it here. And then I need to scoop up the plant itself. So I have these little forks I purchased, but you can use anything you want. And because they were growing all together, not separated, I'm just going to take one little plant. Okay, and here's my plant. Some people remove um, some of the long uh, roots. I really don't. I just put them here. And then I cover everything with soil all the way to the first leaves. And again, I tap it down to eliminate those air pockets. Okay, air pockets. So now I need to fertilize this because this plant just went through stress. It been stressed because I picked it out of its soil. I disturbed the roots. I put it into new soil. Plus I want to give some nutritious food for, for it to eat. So what can I do right now today? So I'm going to use this Neptune Organic uh, Harvest Fertilizer. And it's not very strong. I'm going to be honest with you. It's only 2, 3, 1. That means it's uh, 2 of nitrogen, one, 3 of potassium, and 1, um, no, 2 of nitrogen, sorry. 2 nitrogen, 3 of phosphorus, and 1 of potassium. And I need to dilute it. So I'm going to put uh, in the container with water. This is a gallon in here. And I'm gonna put a couple of, you know what, I should have shook it first. Hold on a second, let me shake it first. 
Oh, it smells like seaweed. All right, I'm gonna pour a couple of ounces in here. Okay. I'm going to stir this all. All right. And I'm just going to water a little bit. How little? A little bit of about a tablespoon worth. That's it. Okay, that's it. And I'm going to put them all in my container here. Make sure that you always label them. Here they are. And these are red, red night peppers. And I seeded them on 313. And I transplanted them into bigger pots today on the 21st. So now I'm gonna keep them in my greenhouse where it's plenty of sunlight during the day. And it's super warm, if not too hot, during the day. This morning I opened the doors around 10 o'clock in the morning and the thermometer inside of my greenhouse showed 100 degrees. I was like, what? Crazy hot. Unfortunately, at nighttime, the temperatures drop. And tonight we expect it to go down to 30s and tomorrow go down to 30s. So I need to protect them because remember, these guys don't like to be cold. They don't like to be cold at all. So, so let me show you what we're doing. Um, these are cold frames inside of my greenhouse. And we have eaten a lot of our greens. All we have left is some sa uh, salad lettuce left in the corner over there. And we've decided to put all of our seedlings inside the green, uh, greenhouse cold frames. We put those cold frames down at nighttime. And we put just a small electric heater just a small electric heater I have here. I don't know if you guys can see it. And we set the temperature to 70 and it runs on eco, which means it turns off when I need to and it turns back on when it has to, to maintain the temperature inside the cold frames at 70 degrees. I think it's pretty ingenious. My husband is so smart, he came up with that idea. So they still get plenty of sunlight, plenty, okay? Look at that, look how beautiful those tomatoes are doing. Oh my goodness. The other ones are still a little yellow because I just transplanted them yesterday and they have not regained their color just yet. But these ones I did a few days ago and oh my word, they're gorgeous, okay? So this is where we're gonna be storing them for the night and they're gonna be nice and warm. All right, friends, so today is a busy day as always. I just uh, transplanted my peppers and eggplant. I checked on my bees to make sure the queens have come out of their little, um, their little cage. A lot to do. And I am falling behind on all of my homesteading chores. There's so much to clean up to do. Just so, so much. Spring is a very busy time. And so just this morning, somebody reached out to me and asking me, well, Mama Lil, when do you have time to do all of these things? And my honest answer is, I really don't have enough time to do all of these things. But there's something I do to help is I don't watch TV. We don't. I mean, we do have a family movie night when we make dinner and we sit around the, uh, on the couch all together and we watch a movie. But that's not every day and not all the time. So that helps me to save some time. So I try not to follow any shows that, you know, will take time away uh, from your daily living and watch a movie or a show every single day. Try not to be in a social media too, too much. At least that's what I try to do. But I do have to say that I try to focus more on my family, more on my faith, uh, time for my family and friends. Um, so they are ways to save time. It just, you know, I try to put priorities, uh, what's important to me and what is not. So friends, I hope you stay encouraged. I hope you start a garden this year if you have not done it yet. Uh, research how to build some, you know, vegetable beds or raised beds. Uh, start a compost pile. Buy some seedlings or start some seedlings. Plant some flowers for the bees. So I hope you are encouraged because spring is such a beautiful season. So try something new. Thank you.